This video is going to be about hedges and stone walls um, and how you could use them on your hex terrain. So these two pieces here are um, sort of standard shop bought terrain. I think these are made by Games Workshop. I've had them for years. Um, so they're designed for sort of 28mm miniatures or thereabouts. Um, so if you've got an area of grass, um, just plain grass hexes, Something like that. Um, you can, of course, just use uh, scatter terrain, we call it like this, and just place it on top um, to build the area that you want, whether it's walls or, or um, hills, sorry, walls or hedges. Um, and as long as your terrain is flat, that works fine. Um, and you don't mind this sort of transition um, between you know, the base, the walls, it looks like it's sitting on top of it rather than part of the terrain, but it's fairly minor, I think most people don't mind that sort of thing. However, if you want to put hills in there, and you know, if you're talking about farming country, sheep fields or anything like that, um, then you're going to have times when you want to have hedges or walls on slopes, going up slopes, and obviously with a piece of flat terrain that's designed to go there, you're going to end up with a significant gap underneath it. Um, which is kind of unavoidable. Um, I mean, if you're lucky, I guess you could try and line it up so one meets the other. Get some more edges. Try and get it to line up, but the next one's not going to be sloping exactly right. So if you want to have sloping hexes, which of course you do if you're using modular hex terrain, um, it would be great to have these hedges be able to be sloping as well, or growing upwards from sloping ground. In the same way we talk about with about trees going vertically from um, sloping hexes. Um, so this video I'm going to talk about some options you have for that. Um, I'm thinking about the purpose for having these hedges and walls in the first place, which is pretty much always going to be to contain um, farming land, containing private property, fields, and so on. Um, and you know, I'm thinking of I'm thinking of fields really as being my primary need for these. Um, so if you've got an area, um, let's say like so, I'm going to turn it around so you can see this better. So we're quite good. I mean, this is only a rough piece I use for portable wargaming terrain. So it's just a piece of old fabric. Um, but the option is there that you could have your terrain you know, inside the field be of a different texture to outside. You might want to have just a standard grass outside and have this be you know, sort of a corduroy style um, moon soil or you have crops in here growing. Um, and there's lots of different techniques for, for sculpting those. Um, but that's, that's an option that you have here. So if you imagine each one of these hexes you would have a hedge going across the middle, grass on one side, and your field texture on the inside. And the easiest way to do anything really with, with hex is where you want to have something continuous running through it, whether it's a, a road, a stream, a railway, a wall or a hedge, um, is that you have them start and finish halfway along your hexagon. And it gives you sort of maximum versatility, halfway along the side of the hex, I mean. So as opposed to set in like that, or, or like so, if you do that exactly in the middle, it means you can flip them around and they, they will fit um, easily either way. Um, the next consideration really is, and this is very similar to, to roads, how I've talked before about having, how T-junctions and right angles are much more preferable with these things. And again, with fields, most fields, particularly if you've ever flown over them, you will have seen how they they form sort of a patchwork of largely rectangular fields. I mean, they may not be exactly, but a lot of them are right angles. So you want to have a way that you can have them follow right angles, rather than... The alternative is, of course, that they just follow the lines of the hexagons. And that's, you know, that's fine here and there, but if, if all your hedges balls are, are like that, I think it detracts from your terrain. It, it 
gives a downside to hex terrain which needn't be there, of, of making all the terrain look very hexagonal. Because you don't you don't need to do that just because it's easier to do it. You don't really have to do it. Um, and the same way I talk about with roads, what I do is is where it's the road, or in this case the hedge is travelling, is built or planted along this direction. You place it down the middle, the simple way. And where it's going at 90 degrees to that, you want it halfway along the sloping edge, the slanted edge of your hex. So we place here. Um, now in terms of individual hexes, that means you're going to have um, your first hex, the simple one I showed you, where you've got the hedge going straight across the middle. So that's, that's your first kind of hedge hex. Then you're going to have one where it's going straight across but the other direction. It's like this. Um, and those are the only two kind of straight hexes, straight hedge hexes you should need. And then you've got your corners, where the straight hedge in one direction meets it in the other direction. So you have those bits. And you need two versions of those. You sort of need a left hand and a, and a right hand one. And you can choose which way you want to do it, which whether you do it this way, so you've got a slightly larger part of the field enclosed, or place it here, which means you've got a smaller part of the hedge enclosed. And it doesn't matter which one you do, really. Um, I would just say pick one and stick to it to get maximum versatility. Um, and if you've got a slope, you know you don't do it any differently. You just make sure you've got a vertical side where the you know where the hedge comes down here, rather than it cutting it at cutting at an angle as this one does because it's placed at that angle. You have it come vertical with the side of the hex, which is it's kind of obvious really. Uh, so there's only one other thing I really wanted to mention, um, and this is a a bit of a downside really, but roads, like if you've got a road on your terrain, like a road through farming country, um, it's pretty normal for the the wall to be immediately next, you know, to be right next to the road. That's sort of what you'd expect to see. Um, but what I just described, how to do it, would put the road or hedge back here, passing through the middle. So you've got quite a wide margin there. And it depends how how much that bothers you. Um, the, the alternative, well, first of all, if you've got narrower roads than this, so if you particularly if you're using a small scale, maybe six mil miniatures or, or smaller than that, then you can easily model your hedge right next to the road. And that solves your problem. And, and if you want to, to have your sort of field texture on the hedge, on the other side of the hedge, then that's easy to do. With, with larger scales, um, I think 15 mil is kind of on the cusp. You might get away with it, you, you might not. But certainly any bigger than that, you're not going to have a road wide enough that you could um, put the hedge on the same hex as the as the road. Um, so if you were to put your to build your hedge or wall immediately next to the road on the same hex. What that means, for this larger scale, what that means you have to do is um, because there's, there's there's enough gap here on the on the point of the hex to put it in and there, but not here where it where it narrows. So you would have to build hexes with just a little bit of hedge on the corner. Um, I don't know. That's I mean, there's no more kinds of hex. It doesn't really change the number of kinds of hex because you, that's the only kind you need is, is that little one point. It feels a little mm, inelegant, I suppose. Um, but it's up to you how, how you choose to do it. Those are the, the sort of the, the two options, you know, having it set back at the edge here where you've got slightly less versatility because I can't, you know, if it's on the, the left side of the hex here, I'm going to show you this first. Yeah, this, this, and these are two different ones. So, as it happens, this is this hedge is exactly two hexes long, which is all very close to. So, if I have another hexagon next to it with the hedge on, and I set it forward, so not in the middle, I put it on here, then it it matches very well. 
but if I take the same hex I built to the other end, it doesn't match up. It's kind of obvious. If you want them to match up either way, then you've got to put them in the middle. Um, but that's taking you further away from your road. So I think my compromise would be to get them as close as I can, probably, stick them at the front, like that. And then you've kind of got a grass verge, which um, doesn't look unreasonable. Um, and, and you can always put some sort of weed scrub and stuff on the on the side here, both on the side of the um, of the road and on the, the front here. Um, that would look that would look quite good, I think. And and put up with the fact that it's not quite as versatile, but it's pretty close. Okay, that's all I wanted to say about um, fields, hedges, and walls. So um, yeah, if you have a go at that, uh, I'd love to see which option you choose, or put in your comments below what you think. Okay, thank you.